So, and I've had a darn good moan about how much the snow causes me grief when you've got to go out and drive in it to work in it. Let's enjoy the beauty of the snow, come on. Still clearing the hedges and tidying the hedges up so the farmer can re fence. Still working with Bob. And a few days of this now, and we have had freezing wind, thick snow, and now warm sunshine, blue sky, warm breeze, and overnight rains have meant even more floods. Look at this road. to say it all just looked very beautiful. of course it's a lure it's not a real kill he knows full well what the difference is he knows it's a training exercise and it's a game to him catch a lure get your food so we don't have to reward him in the same way as I would for something he's really caught himself and we're gonna do a quick trade-off and then ready to run again so we don't want to give him a big feast like I would normally for catching something because we need to do this multiple times we're just doing fitness exercises so toss that to the side works quite well with Zeus as he's got older Keep the weight on the lure, lure behind me. 
and he'll happily work for that reward multiple times until he's tired. Very different from out hunting, catching his own food, where he'll be rewarded substantially because the effort required is much, much greater. And his, his success rate on the lure, as you can imagine, is rather good. Hooded, that's what we're up to as we reposition the lure for next time. His success rate in the real world is incredibly poor. So when he does have success, he's rewarded very well indeed. Next run. Mm -hmm. So Wurzel here, he's gradually getting his bald eagle colours. You can see the sort of the essence of a thank you of a white head and a white tail. As you can see, it's kind of coming through, and his yellow beak's going yellow. His eyes are paler, um, and he's still resting. End of February, we'll start getting him fit and um, back up in the air for the summer, which I look forward to because he's a lovely boy to fly and work with. And worse still, really, for him, like most of the birds, he's not getting out much. He's sitting in his muse a lot. I oh know, it's miserable, isn't it? He's sitting in the muse a lot because of the bird flu scare. We're required by law, really, to keep our birds in most of the time. Um, we are allowed to fly the falconry birds, but we're not allowed, really, to sit them out for extended lengths of time, weathering out on a weathering lawn. So he's not too bothered because when he's... Um, being fed lots and lots of food. He kind of doesn't want to do anything anyway. But, yeah, pretty miserable, I think. And I think, for me and him, it'll be nice to see him, a bit of warm sunshine, soaring around on a thermal, really stretching his wings, and, and mentally a change of scene. Now, I don't, I don't think he really cares about flying much if he's, if he's not hungry at all, and his belly's always full. But, as cantankerous as bald eagles are, they're certainly one of the most intelligent species that I work with. Um, it has it, like funny carry-on, so being intelligent can make them kind of uh, over over thank you, over evaluate things sometimes, and they can be kind of a bit idiot-like with new things, a bit neophobic. But for sure, he likes to do stuff, whether it's ripping up a cardboard box, chewing a dog toy, or flying and getting stimulated by the red kites and buzzards that don't really like. Him. But for now, he's going to come out for 10 minutes while we clean his muse, have his lunch, and go back in his muse and just watch the world go by. So another few weeks, hopefully bird flu will be sort of waning a bit, and we can get him back up in the air and start his, re not really much retraining, but get his fitness back up where it belongs. Come on then. I'm just laughing now. <laughs> he's just making me laugh. So why are you going to be flying him on the line today when he flew so well on the lure machine the other day? Oh, well, there's two reasons. One reason is I like to chop and change. I don't just want to do lure work. I like to do rope work as well because rope work gives them a slightly different kind of fitness. And it also, of course, you, you're building up that constant bond of returning to the glove as well. So obviously, if he misses something two or three hundred yards away, ideally, I want him to fly back to me and not me go and find him. Um, so it's just a different kind of fitness. But the actual real reason is... Um, I really like to look after my kit. I always have. I don't mind paying out for stuff, but I can't afford to replace it. So I always, always, since a kid, looked after my kit. So I've still got an air rifle that I bought when I was 21. It was a really top quality one then. And of course it still is, because I've looked after it. Now, the Bull Cross lure machines are a revelation. They are, they've made lure machines so portable and easy to use. Um, but they're electronic. They're pretty weatherproof, don't get me wrong but it's snowing and it's sleeting and it's raining. I don't want my nice shiny lure machine out in the rain. So for today, rope work, and then tomorrow when it stops snowing, we'll do some more lure runs with him. That's the real reason. Don't want my nice kit to get wet.
something Georgia has seen lots of because it's the backdrop to the artist's field where we fly a lot of the birds, but she's never really seen up close, is the hovel, or more properly put, the crook house. Um, it's not original, it hasn't been standing there um, since its time, since these, these houses were actually used, but it was, it was built from the knowledge of historians and reenactment guys. And you can see some of the building that went on and how it was, how it was built out of Wattle and Dub. And it's actually an incredibly solid, very useful house indeed. Now, it's a fantastic thing and, and the Holden B House has run children's educational visits now forever, since I was a kid, I think. I don't know how long, forever and ever. Coach loads of children have come to Holden B House and they've learned about past times in history. And it's one of the tools that they get shown when they come here. For our customers at Icarus Fulcrum, our guests at Icarus Fulcrum, we actually sometimes use the area outside as an owl flying paddock. Very occasionally, we get to sneak inside and we'll often fly one of our barn owls sitting in the window for Bob Brinsearch's nature photography, photography workshops that he runs here at Icarus Fulcrum at Holden Bay House. So I'm gonna give George a little sneak tour inside now, of course, it is under lock and key. It's off limits to the public, unless it's part of an educational talk or visit and such. Um, so we don't want to find you living in there at any time soon, any of you guys. But we have a little sneak tour, a little sneak tour, and you can see clearly how it was built and how they were built. And really from very simple available materials, you can build a house. A lot of technology, we've got such electronic kind of technology nowadays, and it's sad to think that simple handcrafted technology that was versatile and used by many is actually sort of it's become lost to us people were just as intelligent as we are as a group hundreds and thousands of years ago as we are now and i think it's hard to get our heads around that we forget our technology is an accumulation of many minds over many many years people were just as intelligent and just as clever at building stuff thousands of years ago come on This has been here for a very long time and it's seen its better days maybe, but come on, maybe not. No. So we've got a great storeroom in here, which of course would have been a great size room. Goodness knows how many people would have lived in a house this sort of size in those days. Simple folk, simple means, certainly. Let's have a look in here. Ooh. You might get startled like you do on a, on a movie by lots of pigeons eventually, because there's some pigeon food there. And look at this for a kitchen. A huge hearth and fireplace. And look at this design, it's so, so simple. Just, just you know, almost uh, materials from the woods and the surrounding land it would have been built from. And remember, this was built in modern times by historians. So absolute, you know, credit to those guys, what they were capable of. And then you've got what we call now a mezzanine flooring, an upstairs sort of sleeping area. We'll have a peek up there in a second. It's a great place nowadays for actual wildlife. Last time I was in here was summer. And there were hornets in here, and I, you know, you guys know I love hornets. Look at this. <laughs> and we've got this simple shelving design. Sometimes we can fly our hours out, we don't make very Covered well, you can draw your water. Wow. Let's have a look. Let's have a look upstairs. Think there's anything in there? Look at that. Come on. Now, one reason you absolutely shouldn't explore old ruins and old houses, especially if you are kids, is because you do not know what state they're in. And it's, inc I can tell you now, 
me and my friend Keith when we were kids, we explored an old mill house and both of us nearly went through the upstairs flooring. You can you come to great danger, so don't go exploring old buildings, certainly if you're a young person. If you're older and you do and you're careless and you haven't got any common sense, that's your own fault. But we certainly don't want children to be breaking in to old buildings so they can explore and film things for themselves. But come on, I know this is safe. To read a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so we're upstairs on the sort of the upstairs second level. Unfortunately, the old rope mattress sort of bed there has long since expired. But again, you can see such an amazing design. These crook houses. Essentially, you've got two triangles, well, three triangles here. But as I go through one at each end, as the main frame, the roof beam on top. Absolutely fantastic. Again, <laughs> simple materials, quite simple technology that wouldn't be that difficult to build if you were the right kind of skilled tradesman. I'm more in awe of the modern day people that built this some time ago from that knowledge they had that they've still recreated it. Look at this. Look at this. A lovely little nest. Little wren's nest, I should think. So it's a great wildlife haven now, and certainly a great backdrop when you're doing barn owl photography. Shut the window, keep the elements out. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that little tour of the hovel or the crook house, and hopefully, over the next few weeks or months, we're going to show you some more little snippets and treats around the Holdenby House sort of gardens and estate. Because remember back in the summer when I said to you guys, yeah, things are happening, might be a little bit of a change for this summer. Well, they actually are. So there's gonna be different side to Icarus Falcon Rapture Exotics. Hopefully from Easter or slightly after, depending on the C word, um, how that progresses. So keep watching, maybe little sneak peeks, a little tasters of the wider Holdenby House estate. Our green bottle blue tarantula molted out into adulthood and typically turns out he was a he, a male, which is really going to spend the rest of his life really wanting to track down females, not live that much longer um, and for our school educational, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of wasted, he's better off going to someone that breeds tarantulas in captivity, so a great friend of mine Ben. Uh, he received the mail in the post and today sent us out a couple of different spiderlings to replenish our tarantula stocks here at Rapture Exotics. Some of you will remember that having kept tarantulas since I was a teenager and now in adulthood finally or suddenly developing a, an allergy to their urticating hairs, instead of keeping all different kinds, I now will just keep one or two tarantulas uh, of relatively common species really because uh, they serve a purpose in education but let's see what's in here so, you certainly can't moan at customer service with the packaging on these guys <laughs> chili rows they're probably one of the commonest species of tranches and to be honest one of the best starter tranches really hardy and then this one we've got a curly hair which is a two-handed job Look 
stinky that guy is in there. He's spiraling, there's my finger. My gnarly finger in there. A tiny curly hair, thanks for spiraling. Of course, all captive bread. Let's just check out one of these guys. Spidling, what a beauty! It's a lovely trench, it's not exactly stunning or striking, but it's certainly a great starter species. Highly recommend a chili rose. If you're in the UK and you'd like to source yourself a chili rose spidling, send us a message and we'll put you in touch with a guy who breeds these. What a beautiful little animal! Look how tiny, there's my finger. These guys up, get them fed, get them settled, get them growing, and we'll put them in a vlog when they're a little bit more tarantula sized. By the way, if you don't know, they're the spinnerets down there. That's where their silken thread comes from the spinnerets of the spider. Thanks for watching, definitely subscribe, and we'll see you soon.